Good evening, and welcome to the Rhythm Notes of Public Health with me, your host, Kai Ianto. Today, I am excited about what we're going to be talking about. You know, we're doing our series of women's health, all things women's health. And so today we have Dr. Janella Burst with us, and she's going to be talking to us about a much needed topic to talk about. Um, vaginal dryness. So let me bring her in. Let us get started. Welcome. I am the soul of public health. Dr. Burris, are you here? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? I can hear you. How are you doing today? I'm great. How are you? I am doing well, and I am excited about our topic today, and um, I am doing a series on women's health, and we're going to be talking about a lot of good topics. Um, let me just tell you so you will know and just remind the audience what we're going to be talking about. So it's a sex series for women. And because, but well, we're going to have it for men too, but this is for the women. <laughs> so last week we talked about BV or bacteria vaginosis. Today, we're going to be talking about um, vaginal dryness. And then we're going to be talking about yeast infection. So we're going to talk about all things that has to do with women, their um, health, their sexual health. And then we're going to get into um, middle-aged women and sexual needs. Uh, and then we're going to get into, can menopause ruin your relationship? Because that's mm. going to be a really good topic. And then we're going to talk about multiple orgasm in women. It's going to be real good, Dr. Dr. Burns. Be it's going to be really good. Yeah. And then we're going to talk about self, self-pleasuring because women want to talk about these things. They're afraid to talk about it. They have questions. And the big one is age appropriate behavior, sex and age in women in their 20s. 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s. So we're going to have a woman in each age group. And, <laughs> okay, that part. I'm glad you told me. So if you have someone in their 80s that want to talk about this, and clearly they're still doing what they're doing, in fact, that you said that, you know somebody in their 80s? Okay, well, yeah. I've had to say yeah. TMI to some times. I'm like, well, I yeah, said it to myself. I, I won't that. say it out loud. I'm like, okay. <laughs> You know what? That that gives us something to look forward to because if we're younger, we first of all we didn't see ourselves being fifty when we we're younger. So right. now we're in that age, and we definitely don't see ourselves being 60, 70, and eighty. But I am excited. So if you have a person in their eighties that want to talk, I definitely want to talk. Right now, I have the most volunteer group is the fifties. Because I guess right. that's when we get to the age that we want to talk about it. We have right. our freedom. And so freedom. we want to, yeah, we want to talk about it. So it's like, okay, I have two women for the 50s. So I need to get the other. So definitely I'm going to reach out and you have this lady in her 80s. We want to talk to I her. Hope, we want to hope so. I yeah, she's seen them in a while. So yeah, yeah. reach out to her. And we'll, we'll get her in there. But today, we're going to talk about a subject that some women talk about, like you said, some you say TMI, and then some don't want to talk about it, but they're having these, this problem. They're having problems in sex, their sexual life. And then they're just having some everyday problems, but you're the expert. You're going to tell us, but at, but first tell us who you are, uh, mm -hmm. other than a member of the Black Pink Advisory Team, uh, Dr. Burst, <laughs> but tell us who you are and where you're located. And we're going to tell you that again at the end, but who are you, Dr. Janella Burst? Who are you? Hi, hi. Hello, everybody. I'm Janella Thomas Burst, or Burst is just is fine. Had I known better, I wouldn't have hyphenated. But anyway, <laughs> professionally, I'm Jan Janella Thomas Burst. I am a gynecologist, board certified, located um, in the Grant Park area near the zoo, right on Boulevard, um, 494 Boulevard Southeast. You must put the Southeast in there. You'll end up on the other end. Um, right. 404-835-7779. Myself and my partner, Dr. Alicia Lovelady. Um, we love what we do. We are gynecologists and um, love women's health. Um, oh, and, we're both and, from and, Atlanta. And holistic approach. 
Yeah, we, okay, we definitely ahead, try. We definitely try. But mm-hmm. I forgot to say, I, I am from mm-hmm. Atlanta, um, born and mostly raised. I'll say that a um, little bit in Miami, but the majority here. Went to University of Georgia, Morehouse School of Medicine, Wayne State for residency. And yeah. eventually made my way back home. Yeah, no, that's great. This is like great. I like that you said a, a little bit Miami. Yep. Yeah. I want to know what, what part of that, what part, how long did you live in Miami? Oh, it was seven years. And it was, you know, some formative years from like third uh-huh. through, through ninth grade. I was in ten, going in 10th grade when we moved back to Atlanta. Okay. But, okay. Um, you know, it was, you know, during some formative years. And um, of course, going in 10th grade, I wasn't very happy to move back here at that point. Yeah. You know? my friends and at that time it was junior high seventh eighth and ninth which I think is best but yeah. I'm looking forward to high school but anyway it all works out God works it all out for our good yeah. and yeah I was supposed to come back here because I don't yeah Miami was a, but there was no South Beach back then this is the seven. Oh yeah it was just a beach it was just a beach there was no South <laughs> yeah. Beach they couldn't figure out how to you know on that kind of sand and water build those you know hotels and everything so there wasn't yeah anything like it is now <laughs> yeah no 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 most most things are not even right. look even and, our conversations of things that we talk about right 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 and I do and want then, to step back when I said t- you know sometimes you think TMI but I like I actually like nowadays for most things yeah that we are talking about things absolutely and so people don't really like, think they're alone in any given situation um am I quote unquote normal so you don't want to say normal but there are other people like me yes uh-huh. other people feeling like me absolutely the sexuality that's coming out now is is freeing actually absolutely yeah no absolutely i i'm very excited and every the funny thing is that every time i talk to women about the series they get all excited they're like oh i'm so glad you're doing this like let me know if you want let me know if you need me so i like that (laughs) but but again it's it's women in their 50s so we know that this 50 age is liberating to women and they you know they're not like they were when they're in the 20s they're more in tune to their selves and how they feel right. about situations but let's get into this um vaginal, vaginal dryness so wow. i'm going to ask you a few questions you're the expert you're going to educate us and um you're going to tell us all the things we need to know some things we don't need to know you're going to tell us that too all right. things we're going to talk all things vaginal dryness so first what is it? It's self-explanatory, but these are just my it basic is. questions, right? right? And then, and then, what does it feel like, right? Because it's really not a look, or, or if there is a look, what does it look like? There's and then, look. what does it feel like? Um, why do we get it, and when do we get it? Right. So you're right. Vaginal dryness. The word, the two words, says it all. Yeah. But the question is why. How does it feel? Just like you said, how is it? Is there a diagnosis or whatnot? Basically, if you feel dry, that's the diagnosis. Uh-huh. But typically, we do think of it as a menopausal problem. And for the most part, it is a menopausal problem. But there are other things that can cause vaginal dryness. But we're going to focus, and I'll mention those, but we'll focus on leading up to menopause problems and menopause. But okay. just overall, some younger women can have it too, especially after childbirth, when all that estrogen kind of goes down. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're breastfeeding, some birth control methods, especially if it's progesterone only, mm-hmm. um, can cause the vaginal dryness. I can, I don't mind saying personally, long time ago after my first child and I mm-hmm. tried the depo shot, mm-hmm. it was double, triple birth control because Vaginal dryness, nose dry or anything. But fortunately, <laughs> like you're not going to be doing anything. So right, yeah, right. <laughs> we got you. You don't want babies. We got you. You right. didn't even, you didn't even go through the procedure to get a baby because we're just going to make it like I'm. I don't want anything. To right. Do just yeah. don't even touch me. You know. Yeah. But um, fortunately, most people don't feel feel that way. Most people feel fine with it. But but those women who are who do feel that, mm-hmm. it's not abnormal. It's not something wrong with you. So, a lot of the progesterone only um, contraceptive methods. People that are on anti-estrogen medications for other medical reasons, Mm -hmm. um, particularly cancer type reasons can Mm -hmm. obviously have the vaginal dryness. Mm -hmm. People on antidepressants can have the vaginal dryness. So Mm -hmm. younger women, yes, they can experience it even though typically they don't. Okay, so what, because you were talking about the hormones. So what hormone, right? 
gives us our our lubrication, if you will. Mm -hmm. It's the estrogen or estradiol. So, okay. you know, and so I, I will say what our body naturally produces is estradiol. Correct. Estrogen, yeah, we're talking about that. Yeah. Right. The estrogen are the synthetic estrogens that are made. Mm -hmm. So I might, you might hear me still say estradiol or estrogen. Mm -hmm. I know most people are are familiar with estrogen and yes. may get confused if they come in later and hear me say estradiol. So, but that's what gives us our lubrication mm -hmm. um, in, in our vagina. So as we approach menopause and hit menopause, it does have a different look. And we call that term atrophy, atrophy. vaginal atrophy. Okay. Uh -huh. So A-T-R-O-P-H-Y. So uh -huh. we've heard that word with muscle, if you don't use something, mm -hmm. you lose it, right? It okay. atrophies. So lack of use will make something. Oh, atrophy. so is it, will it be like the, the relaxation maybe so, or maybe if a muscle is, if you don't use a muscle and then if you get ready to pick up, maybe you were picking up 25 pound weights, right? And then you, a year later, you hadn't done it and maybe 25 was like, a, like, wasn't that much, but you get the right. point. And then you go back right. and you try to pick up this 25. Now you can't do it. It's, well, it gets it's smaller. Think of somebody who's who's um, been paralyzed. Uh -huh. Their limbs, whatever limbs are paralyzed, get smaller. Oh, so it's a shrinkage. It's a shrinkage. Of the it's muscle. Literal, the term atrophy literally is like shrinkage or it starts to look different because of lack of use. Understood. Okay. okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. the Maybe vagina, a little lazy. Maybe a little lazy. Huh? Uh, yeah. I mean... <laughs> I'm just I mean, trying to make sure that because 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 see, I have a science mind, you're the doctor. So for right. layman people, I just want to make sure that they're clear on what atrophy is, correct? Is that right. It? So I, like I said, typically most people will know it because of a somebody who's been paralyzed. Okay. Their limbs are, you know, there's the nerve doesn't feed that muscle anymore. Okay. So it's not contracting. Okay. So a contracted muscle will build up. Okay. Uh -huh. You start. You okay? If you stop exercising, you start losing your muscle mass. Okay. Okay. Right? Uh huh. It's a little different with the vagina. We still call it atrophy. So you're not losing your vag vaginal. Well, you're not losing your vagina, but mm -hmm. really, you really are losing vaginal mass because the walls get thinner. They're mm -hmm. not as thick. Hmm. At so what that, age? At what age does that happen? Well, it varies. Uh -huh. You know, it varies. So we know the average age of menopause is 51 and a half. Most mm -hmm. women may start that perimenopausal women in their early 40s, that mm -hmm. perimenopausal time rather in their early 40s. Um, but but their perimenopausal, they're still, they still have the estrogen around. So they're not going to have the atrophy, mm -hmm. but they may not have as much estrogen. So they may have some of the vaginal dryness. Okay. But okay. once... And some, you know, and it doesn't happen suddenly, mm -hmm. just like anything that atrophies is not like, boom, you stop using it and it's gone like, you know, really quick. It takes mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. So when we examine women, well, some women come in because they notice their vulva or their lips, uh -huh. what we call labia mm -hmm. are thinner. Okay. Right. They're they, not they, they actually, they actually notice that. Yeah. They notice so so, 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 because I tell, cause some those who look, they, I was I just about to say, I was I would literally say about those to say who look. That. Because a lot of us say, don't look. Don't look like, like, how do you not, how do you look yourself in the mirror and you know all these parts of your body? Because that's how you notice changes in your body by looking at these parts of your body and you want your partner to look at that part of your body. So why haven't you looked at your part of your body, right? Right, so, but some women don't want their partner to look I, at that part. I, oh yeah, wow. Yeah. Okay, okay well. Some of us, we need I to mean, start looking, like we need to start yeah. looking so we can be aware of things that change, change, right? right. So when you said that women notice this, um, they, they have to look and, and, and know that how it looked last year. Right. Right. But, but, know that of, this but, year was different. but we're a victim of society, right? Yeah. A lot of us. So yeah. to look down there, to touch down there, yeah. you know, it's yeah. taboo. That's why, that's why we're doing this series. Exactly. This why, yeah, exactly. So it's very, it. it's very taboo. So, mm -hmm. um, it is important even from, you know, from a, not just a sexual standpoint, like we're talking we're talking about a medical standpoint. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is important to look down there, to take a mirror, to look down there, because do you have any bumps or sores or anything mm -hmm. that you haven't noticed? Is something changed? Mm -hmm. But you're not, like you said, you hit it. You're not going to notice change if you haven't seen it before. Absolutely. Or you Absolutely. notice something wrong. This is what I get a lot of times. People mm -hmm. are starting to look mm -hmm. and they think something is wrong. 
Ah. Um, those little bumps down there are normal, you know, bumps. Ah. So wow. that's what, that's what mm -hmm. mostly happens. People are starting to look and, and I'll say, well, how long have you noticed? You know, before I'm examining, how long have you noticed? Mm -hmm. well, I just noticed it, but most of them are just starting to really look down there. Now my younger women, mm -hmm. Yeah, so they, they take, yeah. picture, they yeah. take <laughs> pictures on their phone. This is what I say. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, but you know what? But you know what, Dr. Burns, when you, when you were saying that, I was thinking that, um, you, you know, maybe maybe it's a good practice for um, all OBGYNs or GYNs to just have a mirror in there and like, here's a mirror as you're getting undressed, look at yourself. Right. And, and then even they don't only look at their sales once a year. Right. Like, that's still year. better than, that's, right. That's better than, no time, right? Right. Because we have to be, because once a doctor said to me that you're with you way more than I am, right? Exactly. So if I'm with me more, way more than someone else, then I have to be able to notice the change to tell the doctor that the change is there. So right. ladies, we have to start looking at ourselves, right. getting a mirror, putting it down there, knowing what what it looks like, like you said, looking for bumps, looking for sores, looking for things. And so we can notice it to to partner with our doctors to let our doctors know, hey, this is what I saw. So when it comes right. to dryness, maybe they saw maybe uh, plumpness, I guess. Um, how would they know? How do you notice thinning? Like, how do you notice? You said that most, most women, most women don't know, especially if you're not sexually active. Mm -hmm. If you're not sexually active, you really don't know what's going on too much inside your vagina. Mm. You know, if you're not, and when I say sexually active, whether it's with a partner or self-pleasure, as you mentioned uh -huh, before, uh -huh, if you're not uh -huh. doing anything down there mm -hmm. or in the vagina, you might, you won't notice that you're dry. How would you know you're dry mm -hmm. necessarily? So does dryness, does the, does the thinning always equate to the dryness or the, the two are partners? Um, usually, but there are some women who say they don't have vaginal dryness in, men, in their menopausal. Mm -hmm. So um, what, what that, how, what they have extra that most of us don't, I'm not really, we're not really sure, mm -hmm. but not everybody complains, complains of it, but I would mm -hmm. definitely say the majority of women, of women do. So the vagina gets thin, mm -hmm. it gets a paler pink, mm -hmm. then that nice, nice light pink, it gets mm -hmm. a real pale, like, you know, like if your hands lose the color. Uh -huh. I was going to say like, if you're anemic. Mm -hmm. If uh -huh. you're anemic, yeah, your mm -hmm. hands lose that that pink color. It, the vagina starts to look like that. The discharge changes. You're mm -hmm. more susceptible to, you know, yeast, to bacterial vaginosis, other, you know, infections like that. You're more susceptible to urinary tract infections. Hmm. So they call that all of that genitourinary syndrome of menopause. Oh, okay. Wait. Yeah. I, okay, I don't know that. Tell me again. What is it called? Genito. So. Uh huh. G e n i t o urinary it's all one word uh -huh. u-r-i-n-a-r-y mm -hmm. genital urinary syndrome of okay. uh -huh. Uh -huh. so you definitely um more susceptible uh -huh. it's almost like you're it's almost like the immune the local and i and I, this is just me uh -huh. making an analogy it's yeah, not no, absolutely. something you're no. gonna read no 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 absolutely. <laughs> but it's almost no. like a local yeah. immune system that's been affected as well mm -hmm. down there so mm -hmm. um so yeah, and it, if you're not lubricating, mm -hmm. it, it just, it's, if you can imagine sand, your, your vagina feeling like it's lined with sandpaper. Mm -hmm. Hmm. That's how sexy I, I don't, I, I can't like try to imagine that. It just really hurts my feelings. You can't, you can't really imagine until it happens yeah. to you. Then you're like, yeah. shoot. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this you, is what they're you, talking about. You cannot, you can't, you just can't. Yeah. And then, you know, once. Once that starts to happen, then obviously, even before you have sex, you, you're already tight, you know, tense because mm -hmm. you're, you're anticipating the discomfort and the pain. And that just makes it worse. Mm -hmm. It just makes it so much worse. And then you're thinking, well, mind over matter. Can I make myself relax? Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, to, to, to produce some lubrication is, is your thought is to make sure, make yourself relax to produce some lubrication. Right, you're thinking, right. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's just a vicious cycle at that point. Mm -hmm. um, because that's when the pain comes in, right? Right. When, the, when, if you're not lubricated and especially if you're using um, condoms and you're not right. lubricated, that's then that's where the pain. Condoms, yeah. Uh, uh, 
Okay, because yeah. they have lubricated condoms. I mean, right. I sounded really, I sounded really um, green, just green, but <laughs> okay, <laughs> I, I sounded really green on because they got lubricated. Condoms. <laughs> have they always had lubricated condoms? Like, I'm, 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 what? they've had them. It's been all the way. Like, yeah, they've been around. <laughs> Wait, I can't say how long, but so they've always like, had lubricated. Like, oh, okay, mm, yeah, that's I'm, something that that's something to Google. When did yeah, the, yeah, when did the, I don't yeah, know when, when they started. When that but... start, yeah, then I'm so analytical. I've been talking. I'd have been like, what is it lubricated with? Like, yeah, I didn't, I, I literally, I promise you. Now, maybe I go to sleep, but I wake up in the morning. I was like, oh, yeah, I, I remember that. that. But like right now I'm thinking, I didn't, I didn't know condoms were lubricated, but okay, again, it may, but, but when you were talking about um, the, the syndrome, um, I, I was thinking that in, in, cause now I'm thinking, I understand a situation clear. When I was in college, one of our friends was, um, attempting to have intercourse with a guy and it, like, we don't know exactly what happened, but <laughs> they, <laughs> they ended up calling me another friend. Like, you got to go to the hospital. Like the hospital was on campus at that time because the girl had to be taking a surgery. And what had happened was opposing. So supposedly the guy had nails, right. And then he was of course playing with her with the nails. And then they, I guess, had intercourse with the condom and the, and the intercourse with the condom, um, I guess, like you said, that sandpaper kind of scratched up against her vaginal walls and she had a tear and the tear was so bad that they literally had to take her to emergency it's surgery. That. Yeah. So what I'm thinking now that you're, you're helping me to understand about the vaginal dryness is that although she was young, cause we were in our 18, 19, 20, right? Mm -hmm. So although she was young, she may not have had a syndrome of, of, of dryness. She could have, but probably she just wasn't lubricated, right? Right. She could have had some some thinning going on, right? If now that well, she probably didn't at that age, more than likely. I mean, I don't I don't know what he was doing mm -hmm. before, right? With, yeah, you know, if he had nails on his, you know, nails, and maybe he cut her, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, that's what happened. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, that's what it kind of sounds like. But the genital area is very vascular, meaning there's a lot of blood supply. Yeah, it, which makes sense, right? Yeah, when, uh -huh. when you're aroused, you can feel the uh -huh. engorgement coming down there, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. and that's the blood, just like with um, a male, uh -huh. when the penis gets engorged, uh -huh. um, it's erect. So, uh -huh. um, there's a lot of blood supply down there, and the engorgement would be the rising. I just got to make sure that everybody is listening, right. understand our medical jargon that we're throwing out. So, right. that's yeah. why I said <laughs> erect. Hard, that's okay. Yeah, harder, exactly. Whatever. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> listen, listen, you, we got, this is, this is, this is, um, uh, a health education 101, right? 101, and right. sometimes it's hard for, cause you've done this for so long and that that's, that's why I'm here. You've done this for so long. We got to make it health education 101. 101. So everybody will understand and they right. won't feel intimidating because we want to take the intimidation out of right. Learning, right. So, but it's, back to it's the very vascular. So if you cut, if you get a cut, especially if it's a deep cut, mm -hmm. um, it can bleed a lot. I mean, I haven't seen any, much of it since residency mm -hmm. but when i was in detroit some of these um gang initiations they were doing some crazy stuff so we would oh. get these young girls coming in just profusely bleeding from their vagina from cuts inside their really vagina. So, yeah yeah it's just here here in atlanta no this was in detroit i trained oh, detroit. i didn't uh -huh. right now they Not back that that then it you know it, gangs weren't here as like they are now mm -hmm. um you're talking in the 90s so um but in detroit yeah those those young ladies would come in um and what would what would like what, 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 what they, no, were they wouldn't tell you what they were doing oh you never found out but they were bleed they will be bleeding really bad right because they had a cut they were oh. cut in there they were wow cut in the oh okay very vascular it can bleed a lot a oh lot. wow so, oh um, Wow. But we kind of digressed a little bit. But yeah, yeah no, but, no, but, we did, but, but yeah, no, we did, but we gotta we gotta keep the people like, like yeah. So. Along that line in a way, back to mm -hmm. the menopause, because mm -hmm. of that atrophy, that thinning, that mm -hmm. non-lubrication, um that can be inflamed mm -hmm. with sex, you can bleed easily. So okay. that's another one thing that'll bring women in is you know, bleeding, and I have to figure out are they talking about bleeding from the uterus? Mm -hmm. bleeding in the vagina, bleeding mm -hmm. from the rectum, bleeding from the bladder, you know, where's the blood coming from? But if mm -hmm. they give a history of, you know, I see it after we have sex and they're that, you know, menopausal age for the most part, 
um, mm-hmm. which is, that's what we're kind of talking about perimenopause and menopause. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times it's because of the, you, you're bleeding from that friction and the, the vagina can't handle it. Oh, because of the thinning. Right. And it, uh-huh. it, loses, and the dryness. The, it loses its elasticity. So that's its ability to stretch and bounce back, right? Understood. Stretch uh-huh. and bounce back. We have babies uh-huh. and stretches like crazy. Yeah. It bounces for the most part back. Yeah. Bounce uh-huh. back a lot. Mm-hmm. So you lose that, it loses that ability to stretch. Mm-hmm. And you said the perimenopause, so which starts around what age? Usually like, like early forties, okay. like mm-hmm. early forties, some, mm-hmm. some women late thirties, it's very highly variable, mm-hmm. but late thirties, or early forties, where you may start noticing some changes in your cycle. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean you're going to be menopausal next year. You still okay. have 10, 15 years of that, you know, fluctuating cycles or you may be somebody that has regular cycles up until you you know stop having a period so Mm -hmm. also you know just to remind people you probably mentioned it before menopause the definition clinically is no period for a year okay okay that's good to know what no no period period for a year year. no period Uh for a year and that's the natural occurrence of it not if you've had a hysterectomy Mm -hmm. you know that's that just because you had hysterectomy and no period, that's not, that doesn't mean you're menopausal. If you still have your ovaries mm-hmm. and they're still functioning, then you're not menopausal. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But that natural, and it's a little harder to tell when those women are truly menopausal. Mm-hmm. But if you have a uterus and you're having cycles, it's no period for a year. Some mm-hmm. women go 11 months and 20 days and then mm-hmm. they have a period. So Okay. Yeah. No. Yeah. So let's talk about what are some things that other, other than hormones, right. That may cause the vaginal dryness to be worse. Like um, we talked about douching and I want to talk about douching a lot because it is a um, product that, you know, I noticed, I noticed in the, um, it as much. You don't, right. I was going to say, I noticed that they moved it from the mm-hmm. top of the shelf all the way to the bottom of the shelf. Um, because when we did uh, a, a thing on ut- urinary continence and continence or whatever. Mm-hmm. So um, I noticed, and because what the doctor was saying was notice how many um, products they had on the shelf for that. And so as I was looking at the whole section, I was noticing that the douching uh, was on the bottom shelf, right? And you don't see commercials on it anymore. Oh, so, so why is this? So people, are people not doing it? Are they because like becoming more conscious, you, which is good, right? They're learning that they don't, they're learning that you don't need to do it. Ah, you know? that's very so, good. So, so that's some of our mothers and grandmother money. stuff because they had that right. red bag. My, my grandmother had that red yeah. bag. <laughs> yeah, the little enema looking bag yeah. thing. Yeah. 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 So yeah. was that like the same thing? They were just mis- mixing vinegar and whatever. Yeah. With- right. And, and it making it more convenient. It's all about yeah. convenience, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Making it more convenient. Oh, so women are just not doing it more because they are learning that we're, we're, your uh, vaginal area naturally cleanses itself. Exactly. Oh, that's good. We don't to have to know. clean it. Oh, yeah. That's good. That's good to know. But yeah. the women that are using it, it can also cause extensive vaginal dryness. Um, would you say? Well, I mean, your vagina will come back, but you, the biggest thing about douching is you don't want to disturb the natural bacterial flora Mm -hmm. or Mm -hmm. the the bacterial health or what's Mm -hmm. living in your vagina. Mm -hmm. You don't want to disturb that because Mm -hmm. you disturb that, then you might allow the yeast or the bacterial vaginosis, which you've talked about to Mm -hmm. be all that and growing. Mm -hmm. And also you don't want to have that force pushing bacteria up into your uterus. Mm right? Yeah. The cervix has a natural mucus barrier. So the Mm -hmm. cervix is sitting in the part of the cervix is sitting in the vagina Mm -hmm. with all that natural bacteria. Mm -hmm. The inside, the inside of the uterus is sterile. Mm -hmm. So that cervix protects that, that protects the uterus from that bacteria getting into it and causing infection. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to disturb that natural mucus barrier of the mm-hmm. cervix to allow bacteria to get up into the uterus. So mm-hmm. leave, you know, leave it alone. The biggest thing I'm seeing patients come in doing now, well, over the years is um, taking a washcloth, putting a finger, uh, wrapping the washcloth around their finger and putting mm-hmm. it in the vagina to clean out their vagina. Okay. So, yeah, you don't want to like, do that. Like, like, where, where do you get that from? Like, so you let the douche go. Mama, mama. But now you, that, you know, you got a, a towel with, with wrapped around your washcloth, and which is, you don't even really need to use a washcloth in your around your labia anyway, or your yeah. lips. 
So yeah, like yeah. Uh -huh. Vulva is another uh -huh. term. Uh -huh. You can just use warm water in your fingers. Yeah. Just make sure you clean, especially in between the larger lips and the uh -huh. thinner lips. Uh -huh. A lot of people don't clean in between there. When we're, uh -huh. when we're examining that down there, you can uh -huh. see. It's just like if you don't clean behind your ears. Uh -huh. Same thing. Uh -huh. All that, the dirt and the uh -huh. oil accumulate. Uh -huh. So it'll happen there too. Mm -hmm. we, we, we talked about that with bacterial vaginosis and disturbing your pH and mm -hmm. how women um, do go too far with, with cleaning and cleaning products and that disturbs, right? right? So that's important for us to understand because I think um, for a long time, women ha are not clear on, well, I guess they are getting clear in that they're not using douches as much, right? Right. Um, but just to understand how how you clean that area. Um, but so if you don't get this uh, vaginal dr dryness um, under control, then it, we're, not, we're not saying that it's a repeat offender. We're saying that it's, it never leaves unless, unless you get some type of, which we're going to go into, some type of treatment and or something to balance out your hormones, right? Right. And some women, it doesn't bother them, mm. you know, as they get older, they may not be sexually active. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's not bothering. It's not going. It's not bothering them now. The mm -hmm. discharge through life changes mm -hmm. from before we start our periods. We start our periods. That's when we start having a discharge because of the hormones. Mm -hmm. I have to explain that too a lot. That discharge mm -hmm. is normal. Not all discharges are normal, and that's a whole other topic. Yeah, we talked talk yeah, talk about that. You said it again, right? Yeah, right. But we yeah. have to keep saying that. I tell people there is yeah. not one part of your body that does not have moisture. Hmm. You know, black women, we hmm. talk about our hair. It's hard to keep moisture in our hair. Well, every part of our body has to have moisture. Moisture is hmm. life. Life is mm -hmm. moisture, whichever one you want to say it. Yeah. We need water. Yeah. So yeah. the vagina is no exception to right. that. Mm -hmm. So if you're drinking a lot of alcohol, that's dehydrating. You know that if you drink a lot of alcohol, alcohol dehydrates you. You're mm -hmm. going to have as much alcohol as you're drinking. You need to drink some water to replenish, right? So right. if you're drinking a lot of alcohol, right, and you're not replenishing that moisture with water, right, then it's going to be worse, correct? What, you're talking about alcohol? The vaginal dry I'm talking about the vaginal <laughs> about the vaginal dryness it, it, then it's going to be worse because you're not even you're dehydrated right and well, you yeah, have the thinning walls when you're dehydrated your body's you know is our body is naturally about survival mm -hmm. correct so the mm -hmm. most important organs are going to get first first dibs mm -hmm, at mm -hmm, anything mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so um you know your brain your heart mm -hmm. okay you're going to get first dibs at anything so mm -hmm. um you know, but that takes some time for mm -hmm. the most part, even though most of us are somewhat dehydrated because yeah. most of us don't drink enough water. Correct. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. but, but I'm seeing more people buying those huge things of water and it water, says, uh -huh. you know, it has time on it, 9, 11. Yeah. So you're supposed yeah. To be. <laughs> but um, so I'm encouraged by that. I think people yeah. are becoming, definitely becoming more health focused and they've, yeah. surveys are saying that African-American culture despite what people say, mm -hmm. we're more likely to be vegetarian. Mm -hmm. um, so we are more, I think a little bit more health conscious than a lot mm -hmm. of- We're taking control of our health. Yeah. Which is why I do what I do. Cause what we're taking, doing. We're, we're doing, we're doing better at educating ourselves and we're taking control of our health. And we right. understand that, you know, I was talking about before and not to get off topic, but I was talking about before in our neighborhoods, it, we have all these liquor stores every three, four miles, right? Mm -hmm. And then we have all these dialysis clinic every three or four miles. So, you know, and then we have these food deserts. So we have to pay attention to those things and say, hey, why is that happening? And how can we exactly. keep it from happening? But we have to look at the... We have to look at the emotional part when we were talking about, you know, you douching or using the mm -hmm. finger. Sometimes mm -hmm. I have to, you know, I hate sometimes when I don't have the time to talk. And you know, I like to talk to my patients, but yeah, yeah, um, yeah. sometimes there's a psychological component to that. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, you know, not sometimes, a lot right, of times. A lot of times. Was there some mm -hmm. kind of sexual abuse, molestation mm -hmm. that you mm -hmm. feel like you have to clean mm -hmm. that way mm -hmm. in the vagina. Mm -hmm. So, um, cause you feel dirty still. Yeah, absolutely. And a lot of people, you know, have suppressed. Absolutely. Memories, absolutely. Um, absolutely. And, and they will come back, come out one way or another. One way or the other. So 
you didn't even yeah. see it coming. You sat you like, wait, what was, that? Like, right. what was that feeling? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, you know, I definitely have to try to pick up on those things and, you know, refer people for help and, and yeah. whatnot. Yeah, because you, um, you have to be the counselor too. You got to be the, yeah. the OBGYN, you got to be the counselor. You got to like, and I know you guys go through all of that in school, but but thank Not you. Not really, you'd be surprised. No, no, no. Oh my gosh. Oh, I mean, wow. medical school is four years. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, you know, it's only so much you're going to, you know, you get a little bit of a lot of different mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we hope that things you have, are, ch they are changing. Mm -hmm but you just don't really have the time to focus on some things are just a lot of things to learn as we go with experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, you have to kind of be patient with the younger docs, mm -hmm. you know, people, mm -hmm. people are patient with me, but some of us are more sensitive than others mm -hmm. anyway. But um, Well, thank you for being intuitive to be able to pick up on that and pay attention to it and not just say, Oh, like I, I was telling, I was telling this, this person told me I have a doctor who wants to be a part of your advisory team. And I was telling her about this whole vetting process of how it was important for me to have doctors, not just prescribe synthetic drugs, but have a holistic approach if, if available to do for maintenance or what have you, but to even just introduce you. And it was important to me for uh, the doctors to have patients, and I mean, not patience, but patience, right? Patience, right? patience Please, when, right. when explaining so people can understand and, and understand that when you go to the doctor, you're intimidated, right? Like, I don't right. know what they're talking about. I just, I'm, I'm just going to go what they tell me. And right. then to just be comfortable to ask questions, which brings me to, okay, so you have vaginal dryness. We, we know about this uh, thinning walls and um, atrophy, which is a shrinkage, right? right? We know about the okay. blood flow. <laughs> what do you say? pain <laughs> yeah the pain and we know about the the blood flow but let's talk about what we can do what treatment what what are our first steps i know that some women say that they have their husbands to use um some type of lubrication and if you will just talk about that too when talking about a treatment um topical treatments, um, internal treatments and hormone treatments. So what are the treatments? What can women do if they have vaginal dryness? Cause I know some women, I know a person personally that says they have this estrogen synthetic mm -hmm. cream that they use and they apply it maybe t twice a week, maybe. Yeah, I think. It helps. Uh -huh. And, mm -hmm. and they utilize that because their, 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 uh, GYN said that it, it helps to thicken their walls back. So if you can just explain those things, um, to us, some treatments, and I know that you are, um, in to introducing and educating us on CBD. So if that's used, if CBD is used, <laughs> I also want to talk about that because I want to make, um, CBD a a common topic, if you will, in, in conversating, because I don't want us, and when I say us, I mean Afro descendants, being behind on the education on okay. what CBD does for us, right? Right. right. So, um, so ahead, you know, <laughs> <laughs> most people uh, go to lubricants, you know, mm -hmm. over-the-counter lubricants. Um, they're water-based and silicone-based. Mm -hmm. The water base are healthier, but they don't last nearly as long. Mm -hmm. um, silicone base tend to last long. You just mm -hmm. you don't want oil base because um, if you're using a condom, it can mm -hmm. affect the uh, effectiveness of the condom mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as well. So which um, one should they be getting water based? You say water based. Okay. Water based, mm -hmm. but they just don't last very long. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? What do you mean when you say it doesn't last? It doesn't last very long when you're Throughout having intercourse. Your, Yes. Throughout the process, throughout yeah. the, throughout, throughout the intercourse. And so, you know, I know like people, three minutes, like if people like three minutes, like short I, I think time, everybody's you know. different. I don't know how long. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm talking about the stuff doing that for three minutes. Well, that's what I meant. That's what I was talking about. I don't know how long the lubrication, the lubricant lasts. <laughs> okay, go ahead. I digress. Go ahead. Dr. You Percy. digress. <laughs> yeah. I think somebody better watch out. But, um, <laughs> I'm asking for our audience to the birds. <laughs> Go ahead. But, um, but yeah, so they don't, the water base, they don't really last, last mm -hmm. very long. And even mm -hmm. the silicone base, it's still not the same as what your, your body naturally continues throughout the act, continues mm -hmm. to lubricate itself. Mm -hmm. So, um, and if you know, what you can do is you can 
test it yourself. You can mm -hmm. buy the different kinds, even just feel them mm -hmm. versus your own lubrication. You can feel your own lubrication mm -hmm. and feel the difference. And when they feel them, what, what, should, what feeling should they be looking for to say this is good? Like you want it slippery. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the main thing, mm -hmm. right? You just mm -hmm. want it what you want it to feel good and they try mm -hmm. to make them feel as natural as possible mm -hmm. what we produce but the problem is like i said we have an ongoing production in our bodies mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so how are you going to have an ongoing production of a artificial lubricant so if okay, so keep using it now you can you can be creative mm -hmm. in your sexual act mm -hmm in order to, you know, whatever, wherever your imagination takes you. Yeah, uh -huh, I understood it. <laughs> lubrication uh -huh. going as far as the artificial over-the-counter lubrication. Mm -hmm. I was gonna ask, so the with the vaginal dryness, if, if, if a woman has vaginal dryness, is she not able to have an orgasm? And if she is able to have an orgasm, is the or orgasm, or orgasm not um, lubricated? What, what, help me understand. Okay, that. so this, that's kind of, it's kind of separate in a way because mm -hmm. You can still have an orgasm, mm -hmm. but that is another, I mean, and when you talk, I'm sure in your other podcast that mm -hmm. when you talk about actual sex and menopause, mm -hmm. there is that problem having orgasm due to menopause. It has nothing to do with lubrication though. Mm -hmm. There's that, you have a blunting of your orgasm for, some, for a lot of women because mm -hmm. of menopause. Mm -hmm. the, because and this is a whole nother subject too because yeah the, yeah no yeah the lack of, no the but lack listen of, listen i gotta ask the question whether people right, want to know right the lack of <laughs> the lack of testosterone in our body which mm -hmm. we know produces our libido our sex mm -hmm. drive but and it contributes to that orgasm okay, okay? Mm -hmm. so with that being gone you know because it's coming from your ovaries for the most part mm -hmm. um some women do have trouble having an orgasm they okay. may describe it as i feel like i'm you know, I want to have one and mm -hmm. I feel like it's coming, but it never happens. Mm -hmm. So that's a whole, but that has nothing to do with the lubrication per se. Understood. So majority of women actually are orgasmic from direct clitoral stimulation, mm -hmm. right? Which so people talk about all the time. Yeah. Right. You don't mm -hmm. have to have penile penetration to have an mm -hmm. orgasm. Mm -hmm. so that's mm -hmm. what I was saying. It's separate. So yeah. if, you have that, if you're, if your hormones are allowing you to have an orgasm, mm -hmm but you're not able to have vaginal penetration, you can still have an mm -hmm. orgasm. Understood. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah most and if you're, those if you're using those lubrications, if you're using those lubrications, right, to start the initiate, to initiate um, maybe entry, right? Mm -hmm. And then if you and then if you have an orgasm, then you now will help with the lubr lubrication, right? Of the vaginal dryness, not, no? Well, it depends. I mean, that's the whole problem, right? Uh, some women are not lubricating okay okay so, that's what i was trying to connect the second so, like say is right, that connection right. so mm -hmm. a, a man having an orgasm without ejaculating mm -hmm. and they're finding you know they talk about now how some women have actually ejaculation too mm -hmm. um, you have increased fluid mm -hmm. that comes during that orgasm they, but you say they're talking about what now about women having women having women Quote, we, we say ejaculation, but mm -hmm. there's evidence that some women actually have an ejaculate when they orgasm. Oh, so they have okay. increased. Fluid. I'm gonna make a, I'm gonna make a note for a sec. Okay, tell tell me for, tell me tell me for tell the me later what, podcast. Yeah, I'm like because I didn't I didn't know that. Like I'm I'm learning. Like I'm learning. So, I, I hadn't heard that. Yeah. So there's this. Um, I should have brought, I didn't, I didn't think about it, but I bought this book a long time ago. I don't know how many mm -hmm. years ago. And mm -hmm. I was just looking at my shelf and my eyes came across. I never read it. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's by a gynecologist, but it's mm -hmm. what your mother never told you about sex. Oh, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Now she goes from the very beginning. She doesn't just start at sex. She uh -huh. starts at anatomy, mm -hmm. you know, making women see that, that we're all made differently. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing wrong with you if your labia are a little longer or they're not symmetrical and this and that everybody's made different differently. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. she talks about it from the basics on mm -hmm. to sex mm -hmm. and whether it's self-pleasure, what a man goes through, 
So it helps us understand. I'm going to get that book. That's, I like that. I like that right. book. Yeah. I like, I mean, I like what you're telling me about the book. I'm going to get the book, especially with the series that we're doing. Um, it'll really help me to stimulate additional questions, right? right? Even though I normally ask the audience, like, what do you want me to ask, right? But it will, but but I I hadn't like I see like I heard of the book, or, or maybe I'm getting that confused with what what to expect when you're pregnant, pregnant, maybe so. Just but yeah, yeah, but it's, um, what, so it's, it's what very, your mother never told you about sex. Yeah, I think that's the name of it. If you if you want to like take a break and I can go get it or whatever, but uh-huh. um, but it was very. It made me realize that talking to my daughters about sex Mm -hmm. the way I thought I was supposed to talk to them about sex. It wasn't Mm -hmm. actually talking to them about sex. Mm -hmm. I talked to them about their bodies, you know, sexual health. Yeah. Sexual health versus sex. Yeah. Yeah. So we talked about sexual health, your body's sexual health and, you know, your period and blah, Mm -hmm. blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But I've never still now talked to them about sex. Now, whether they want to hear their mama talking about sex, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, probably yeah. not, you yeah. know, yeah, no, but yeah. I think, you know, for, I've had patients, you know, they start with their daughters young, you know, most mm-hmm. of us just don't want to, like, they don't want to think about us having sex. Mm-hmm. We don't want to think about mm-hmm. our kids having sex. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, but, but I, but I'm one of those persons. Be afraid of it. Yeah, no, that, that's me. A- I want to empower her. Right. I, I want to give her, I want to empower her where, where it's not a, 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 a man or a guy telling her. Mm-hmm. about how she should her. feel, what she should right. feel, what, what happens. I want her to understand her, her body, body, her body, and, what right. she likes. Correct. And be empowered Correct. in her body. I, I absolutely. Do that. And my does. child's 16, but, and, and right. you know, she's, she's, she's not doing that right now, but I'm, I'm preparing and it may, and it may be a part of it is that I've taken the mystique out of it. Right. So, because right. I do important. talk about it and it's, it's not like, oh, I want to do it because, oh, I want to know how, like, because mm-hmm. my mom has this conversation with me. So I've taken the mystique out of it. Right. right. So now she doesn't feel like, oh, it's this unknown. Right. Because right. now, now she understands it. Right. And I think if we take control of our daughters in that way to explain to them and not be so, oh, taboo and, oh, I don't do that. And, oh, right. I didn't do that. And you know what I mean? Like, and to, to, to let them know that this, this is what has happened. I think mm-hmm. that a lot of things that are that happens with teen pregnancy and all of the things that happen with boys right. and girls w- won't happen because we're now taking control of our daughters and their sexual health. Right. Yeah. And then when they get married with their or whoever, whatever mm-hmm. situation mm-hmm. is with understood. their partner, Look, understood. 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 With their partner, they can um, they'll have more of a healthier relationship, healthier relationship, yeah. and yeah. she can tell him what pleases her. Mm-hmm. No, I don't not to be not to be afraid to say I don't like that. That doesn't feel good to me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. you know, yeah. Be more verbal with absolutely. With and um that generation is more likely to anyway. Yeah. But Dr. Burr, I'm it, so I'm it. so excited and I hate to have to wear you out doing this uh series. And but what but what happens is when you're really, really smart in a whole <laughs> bunch of areas, like you get to be, it's like the lady on Good Morning America. Like she's, she's an OBGYN. I, I don't think people know that, but she is, oh, yeah, she um, is. Yeah. yeah, she's an OBGYN, but she is well-versed and she really, she's really just their staff doctor. Right. right. And she kind of talks about a lot of different things. Like that's me with majority of the um, advisory team. They're really smart and they have a large verse of conversations that can be had. And so I'm, I'm, you know, Dr. Burst will definitely be back several times. She's going to get tired of me. Like my schedule does not permit this. Dr. Burst, we need you on this. And, but, right. but, but so I'm learning time. too. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, because no, the absolutely. society, like I, I told somebody I'm affected by society just as anybody else. So yeah. I, I have to put my anxious or whatever aside when I'm talking yeah. to people to be more yeah. forthcoming don't so, be squirmish like me. I'm like, right. Oh, wait, I learn a lot. Me. I learn yeah. a lot of things mm-hmm. myself. So mm-hmm. when I pick up on things, learn things, I try, I, I try to incorporate, like when you thought about the mirror, I actually, from reading this book, which was just mm-hmm. maybe two months ago, actually, mm-hmm. I, I said that to myself, I need to have a mirror in the exam room. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So see, and see, see, try see. to empower themselves. Yeah. Like, no, like no, the, no, no, listen, let's just start this movement. Hashtag mirror, mirror. Like, yeah, you know what I mean, and not not the man in the mirror. Not the I hate to say I hate to say the uh, the vagina in the mirror, but the vagina right. in the mirror. Like, vagina, vagina look, in the mirror. look at yourself, like you know, like that. that right. That's really we should really start that whole movement of take a look at yourself. 
know what you look like, no changes, because that's the only way that you're that you're aware. But and but in talking about um the treatment, treatment right, right. Uh -huh. <clears throat> so so we talked about the topical that you can go Top, by. Right. And uh -huh. the thing that you can put inside as well as outside, because like we mm -hmm. said, the vulva, the lips mm -hmm. also get dry mm -hmm. and there's a lot of irritating irritation and itching mm -hmm. for the oh. outside. And sometimes so, they think they have a yeast infection, but they don't. Exactly. Just from the dryness. Come in thinking the same yeast. way if your back is, do you even put lotion and you're mm -hmm. itchy? Exactly. Because it's dry. Ah, it's dry. Okay. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, a lot of us doctors say, oh, you got yeast infection. Ah. No. And it could be um, vaginal dryness. It could be vaginal dryness. So ladies, you got that. So sometimes, now sometimes it may be most of the time, and especially if you're younger, it probably yeah. is, you know, yeast. And, and if you're <laughs> diabetic, else, yeah. if you're diabetic, it's uh, probably yeast. Okay. But uh, uh -huh. a lot of times it can be that it's just really dry. And um, some people use Vaseline and it, it does mm -hmm. help, mm -hmm. you know, it, it soothes it. Mm -hmm. But you want to um, get that moisture back in there too. And mm -hmm. so some of the lubrications are for in, um, moisturizers, I should say. So they're mm -hmm. moisturizers and there's lubricant, there are lubricant, mm -hmm. lubrications, mm -hmm. moisturizers and lubrications. Mm -hmm. So some of the moisturizers are for in, that are over the counter for inside and outside mm -hmm. um, as well. Mm -hmm. So there are important. some um, prescriptions, right? There's some prescriptions, not mm -hmm. so much for moisture, moisturizers and lubrications. But for the, for the, for the, for, for the, the estrogen, estrogen right? so for the mm -hmm. next treatment, mm -hmm. for another treatment is replacing your estrogen, which is mm -hmm. what helps us lubricate. So mm -hmm. there, um, there's estradiol too. There's also, there are estrogens that are synthetic and there's some estradiol mm -hmm. cream too. They're not, okay. cheap. Uh -huh. they're not cheap though. That, yeah. estradiol, uh -huh. that estradiol cream and those estrogen creams, um, if it were for men, they would probably be cheaper, mm -hmm. unfortunately, mm -hmm. you yeah. know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But for, it's, they're, they're not, um, the price, they can be really, really pricey, like, you know, even a couple of hundred dollars just for a month supply of cream, okay. something like that, but, uh, or uh -huh. two. But it does mm -hmm. help. It gives you a local effect. Um, mm -hmm. So you're not going to get the other benefits like for mm -hmm. hot flashes and things like that, but mm -hmm. you'll get the local effect of-, of well, Orally, is there something to take orally or yeah, no? There are a lot of oral, you know, synthetic estrogens mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. as estradiol that's mm -hmm. oral. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And, you know, we're not gonna get deeper into, you know, if you're mm -hmm. on estrogen and you have a uterus, you need to have progesterone mm -hmm. too, but we're just talking mm -hmm. about treating, you need to talk to your, OBGYN or your primary. Some primaries are very well versed. If that's if they like that topic, if they have an interest mm -hmm. in that topic, they may have more information. But um, mm -hmm. you can take them orally, or you can do what you know we do: um, mm -hmm. the pellets. So the, the pellets, pellets, the bioidentical right, hormone replacement the bioidentical therapy, hormone replacement therapy mm -hmm. pellets um, are wonderful. Mm -hmm. You don't have to think about it every day. It's always in your body. It's always there. And so not only yeah, that, yeah, it's a miracle <laughs> worker. <laughs> I can do the commercial. The miracle worker. Miracle worker. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. Right. I can't imagine. I mean, I know we're not talking about that today, and we're not. But I can literally, I can't imagine my life without those the pellets, pellets or those bioidentical right. hormone replacement because right. I say I say I'm 53 but I say I'm 35 like right you know you feel, so you feel that way it, it really it yeah intimacy. and we're more mature yeah. now so it's a whole different yeah. level than we it, were in our 20s <laughs> you know yeah now it's people now different. people scared of, I be I be having husbands telling me don't tell my wife about those pellets like right like you say you want her to want it more but then when she wanted more you say it's You're too much so you're, but that's that's the that's, the that's the big history. point too. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, think they yeah, want it all the time. Now, are you really till, ready? They think yeah. they want it all the time till they can get it all the time. Then they're like, yeah, like yeah. How do you want it every day? <laughs> like yeah. Okay, but let me. See. We not back to the topic. So yeah. those pellets. Oh, so like the pellets. Anyway, uh -huh. you, anywhere you're going to get the estrogen in your body, whether it's not uh -huh. as a safe way or a safer way, is going to help uh -huh. lubricate your vagina. And, uh -huh. and so what, and flashes, then what about CBD? Hmm? What about CBD? The CBD? Well, there's not much, treatment. there's not, I haven't seen any studies on CBD as a treatment for vaginal dryness, mm -hmm. but we do know we have um, 
an endocannabinoid system in our body. So when I say mm -hmm. endo nobody understands that, Dr. Burst. Right. So I'm getting ready to break it down. <laughs> endo means inside, uh -huh. cannabinoid, cannabis like, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. so anything uh -huh. that's uh -huh. void is something like, right? Uh -huh. So inside, we in our body, we have uh -huh. cannabis receptors. Uh -huh. So our body is made to have cannabis. Mm -hmm. So what the government did to us in 1937 because of money and mm -hmm. greed and racism, okay? Mm -hmm. Don't say too much because you know we're having a show on CBD, so. Right, that's a whole other lot. But, you, just, you just entice them a little bit to come back, but right. we're going to talk about that. Like, we're going to exactly. educate. Yeah. It's almost like if the government said, oh, we're going to take the um, vitamin C out of your diet. Mm -hmm. We're going to take whatever you know, supplements that we take now because we can't get enough in our food. Oh, well, mm -hmm. we want big farmer or somebody else to have all this money. So we're gonna, you know, say you can't- Take this out so you'll need it. So can you mm -hmm. imagine that if we said, well, we, we found out what happens with vitamin C, you get rickets, problems with your bones, mm -hmm. right? If you don't have vitamin mm -hmm. C. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's what they did to us in 1937. Before mm -hmm. that, cannabis and, um, was in just about, it was everywhere, some form wow. of, whether, wow. it was, whether it was, they didn't even use the term marijuana before then. Mm. No, marijuana, what year was that? No, what year was that? This was 1937. They passed the, okay, marijuana, uh -huh. they passed the marijuana tax act, which okay, overly uh -huh. taxed anything that had to do with cannabis. So whether it was, and I'm going to say marijuana in quotes, because they didn't really mm -hmm. call it that until around that time. And that was a racist mm -hmm. term. To, that they did it. Mm -hmm. And um, so they overly taxed, they taxed the pharmacies selling it. They fat, mm -hmm. they taxed the people who had hemp farms. So hemp is a plant mm -hmm. that's a cousin mm -hmm. to the marijuana mm -hmm. plant. Mm -hmm. Cousin, but they're not a, they're not alike, right? Cousins are mm -hmm. related, but not alike. Mm -hmm. So but you're not gonna you're not gonna get into this whole C B D thing because oh, we're gonna have a whole say, other conversation. Okay, go ahead. I just want people to know that the US used to be a huge hemp farm place. They used mm -hmm. it because they had to pay taxes to the king when they left England. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everybody George Washington, everybody those, had hemp. Hemp was yeah. everywhere. It's in our clothes, it was in yeah. our clothes, the animals mm -hmm. were fed it. So it was mm -hmm. part of our, so we didn't suffer. They feel like we, there's a syndrome they've termed endocannabinoid deficiency syndrome. Basically mm -hmm. the lack of cannabis in our system, they think mm -hmm. has led to a lot of these chronic diseases that we have now, oh, okay? wow. as well as all the wow. pollution and junk. But yeah, maybe our body yeah. would be able to fight that better. Like they so, talk about D3 deficiencies and those things, but you right. don't talk about that because you're still trying to figure out how to get the money tax right. on it. Yeah. Okay. But, our, okay. but we have receptors in our reproductive system. Mm -hmm. So who's to say that if we still had that cannabis in our system, which we can now, mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. if we still had that in our system, who's to say that we wouldn't have some of the, the fibroids and all that that we're having? Yeah. No, no, no. That's interesting. And we and, and we are going to have a show dedicated just, just to talk about CBD. CBD. So, yeah, because we're not we're not going to be behind on this education mm -hmm. because 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 America has put in our head that it's something bad. Right. And, right. and because they put us in jail. And so we're going to understand. So we will be able to take control of ourselves and our right. health by and having the knowledge of exactly what it is. And it's so much more than smoking a joint, if you will. Right. Right. But, it's, it's, but it's we're right. going to educate so, so people more. can it's, understand. It's, total, it's totally away from that. You know, CBD will not get you high. You could have as mm -hmm. much as you want. You just don't fall asleep. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get high. They used mm -hmm. to call it the hippies disappointment because they did not get <laughs> yeah so, yeah okay no so, yeah no, um, absolutely yeah so not only for our health but even financially if people mm -hmm. get into it now mm -hmm. you know um because this it's going to be a something trillion dollar industry soon so yeah and, and you don't have yeah. to grow you don't have to grow your own hemp farm people have figured figured it out made it safe because it can be dangerous if it's not grown carefully mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you don't, you were not trying to put poison in our system. We're trying to put health in our system. So yeah, um, if you're yeah. not careful. You but y'all see what happened when you have a smart 
doctor on that well-versed, um, <laughs> you get a lot of information that you need to have. Um, and we're going to be talking about, now y'all understand why Dr. Burst is a part of this uh, <laughs> Black Pink Advisory Team. You, you clear on why now, because she's so smart. Black, black women, black doctors, black OBGYN, black GYNs rock, right? A part of that. One more thing. All. Go ahead and say it, doctor. Go ahead. The, say. One more thing. Now for she the asked treatment. me, how long are we going to be on before we came on? Now she asked I me. I know. Because it's so thing. much fun on here. It's so much I fun. I know. <laughs> uh, so imagine if there were other people here, it'd be my yeah. own night. <laughs> yeah. But what we also have in my practice is a vaginal laser. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So for people mm -hmm. who can't, for whatever reason, they can't take the hormones, the lubricants, mm -hmm. you know, they're mm -hmm. not worth it to them. Mm -hmm. It helps your, it helps the vagina locally. So it makes basically the laser makes very tiny. You can't feel it or see it. Mm -hmm. Microscopic tears in the vagina. What that mm -hmm. does it. And again, you can't see it. You can't feel it. It doesn't hurt or anything but mm -hmm. it helps your, the vagina when it's repairing itself, it repairs itself with more collagen, makes it more mm -hmm. elastic, it increases mm -hmm. the lubrication. Um, that's, that's, what's, what's, that, what's that called? Vaginal laser. Okay, vaginal laser. laser. L-A-S-E-R. Okay. So uh -huh. some, some, pa some places have it, they call it a Mona Lisa. That's a, that's a brand name for it. So that's a brand mm -hmm. name, I'm using a generic the mm -hmm. generic form, term mm -hmm. of it. So, um, but the lubrication increases, um, the orgasm increases, the inc it helps mm -hmm. with the incontinence. So if you are having incontinence and leaking, it helps mm -hmm. with that. So some mm -hmm. of the comments I've had from patients who've had it, now some of us try to be a little sneaky, right? We don't tell mm -hmm. our partners what we're doing. We just mm -hmm. kind of do it and see if they notice. Uh -huh. Hands down, the partners are like, they and so how long, like, what, what do they do? They come in, you said it's, it's um, vaginal laser. So what do they, right. they do? They come in. So this is not like vag vaginal steam, right? No, it's not vaginal steam. Okay. No. So, so is this a, is this a, a procedure that you do to? We do, we do the it women? in the office. We do it in, the, in office. the office. It's, it's not. It's like certain. with a wand or something like what? Yeah, it's, it, a what, little, what do you it's do? a little probe. About, mm -hmm, a little probe. About this, I don't know if you can see it about this long. Um, uh-huh and maybe about this fat and it goes into uh -huh. it's connected to the machine that produces the laser and we just uh -huh. put it in and we slowly laser coming out we do that three different times in that one mm -hmm. session it may take 15 minutes mm -hmm. doesn't take long you can go leave and go to work it's nothing you don't have to take mm -hmm. any no anesthesia no nothing mm -hmm. you can go mm -hmm. about your business and so it does so it doesn't hurt it doesn't hurt and how often yeah. do women have to get this procedure done well, you just, you need to get three, three sessions, one, once a month for three months. Okay. Once a month for three months. Okay. Right. Uh -huh. So, you know, there's a one price for all of it, obviously. And then mm -hmm. for most women, it lasts anywhere from 12 to 18 months. Okay. Uh-huh. So it's a, you know, especially for women who are um, cancer survivors, whether it's breast cancer mm -hmm. or any other cancer that mm -hmm. they can't take any hormones. Um mm -hmm. It's really good for, it's really good for that. Very good mm -hmm. for that. And so this is, and this is called vaginal laser. Vag, we call it vaginal rejuvenation. So re, Va re oh, okay. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. I've heard of that before. Rather, rejuvenating your oh, uh, okay. vagina. So we do okay, that. But, but you're doing it with the laser. Right. We're doing it with the laser. There's another uh -huh. one, another procedure called platelet rich plasma, uh -huh. platelet rich plasma, uh -huh. P -R PRP. So you, okay, some uh -huh. people may have heard of it. Um, with with, start, with your hair and your scalp. Hmm? Th is that the PRP that they talk yes, about with same. your scalp? Okay. You can, uh -huh. can use that with something uh -huh. else to, you kind of have to needle it Stimulate in. Stimulate the growth. Uh-huh, yeah. You haven't done uh -huh. that. But, um, but it is the same. It's the same PRP that orthopedics is using to inject in knees. Okay. And that's where it started. And you do that in the, the, the vaginal area? Yeah, you can do it in the vaginal area. And mm -hmm. basically, so the question is, where are you getting those plate? Well, first of all, what are platelets? They're parts mm -hmm. of your it, part uh, cells in your blood. They help you clot, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And the plasma is your your blood is made of plasma and red blood cells mm -hmm. and platelets and a lot of things, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we use your own blood. You come in mm -hmm. that same day. We draw your blood. 
we spin it out in a special centrifuge mm -hmm. that gets that special mm -hmm. layer, doesn't have any red blood cells and may have a little bit. Separate um, it. Uh -huh. Separates it and uh -huh. we get that platelet rich layer, plasma layer. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. after we numb you up down there real good with some mm -hmm. numbing cream, we inject mm -hmm. it and you don't feel it because you're numb. You, we inject okay. it around the clitoris. So that also helps with incontinence and lubrication and orgasm. So some people made the a, one of the trade names for it because if, if I if I get something and I market it, I can give it a trade name, right? So if somebody mm -hmm. started doing it, marketed it and gave it a trade okay, name. Okay, yeah, no, you can. Yeah, absolutely. Right. They they call he calls it he calls it the O shot. O shot, uh-huh. O shot for orgasm. Okay. Right? Okay. Uh-huh. So, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So um, so we do that too. We're not calling it the O shot because we didn't go pay five thousand dollars for his course. So yeah. um <laughs> But you can learn how to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, no, yeah. It. And it's for men too. They do um, penile injections of platelet-rich mm -hmm. plasma mm -hmm. for men. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, so there are other ways to do it to help with your lubrication um, mm -hmm. and help with other things in the process. Mm -hmm. So when we can go back out in the world and everybody gets their uh, vaccination and what have you, right. then we can really talk about this and you know have some video and film to right. talk about it and maybe I and maybe I'll do a um what do you call it when you go um uh, field trip maybe I'll do a field trip into the office yes. uh, <laughs> I can think of a simple I can think of field trip right maybe I'll do a field trip into the office and so I, I can kind of like look at it and see and so mm -hmm. and put it in our menopause uh group um Facebook menopause or even group, so you know I don't know it. I don't know how um regulated podcasts mm -hmm. are but if somebody mm -hmm. wants to be the you know the to demonstrate on a for real oh you can see that <laughs> <laughs> demonstrate if for you're real, not on the video you, know. you didn't see what just happened so yeah right. that part okay and so no, also, no that's interesting we, yeah because we can still mm -hmm. even even if we can't actually show the vagina which i don't know if we can but mm -hmm. we could still be in the room and show what we're doing without actually Correct. No, absolutely. You know. Uh-huh. You can probably show it on the film. You probably can't show it on yeah. um you're gonna get me taken out before I get on good, but okay. But you yeah. can see it on but YouTube. We, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, no, absolutely. No, yeah, absolutely. I'm gonna look into that, Dr. Burke. Yeah. Cause so. I'm cause I want to be able to um again educate and have people like and then and then to actually know somebody like, okay, yeah, I did it. This mm -hmm. is what happened. Exactly. Right. And then you say, Oh, sign me up. Cause the moment people know what happens, they're gonna be like right sign me up like so right. so if they're getting the so if they're so if they're if they're getting the pellets right do they mm -hmm. still need to do this or will it just enhance is it it's just a, a further it, it, enhancement it will, en it will enhance <laughs> it will enhance okay <laughs> <laughs> awkward silence <laughs> okay well, i'll say one one person who had the laser she she describes it as a waterfall Oh, did, did, did she have the um, pellets also? She has the pellets. Uh -huh. She had the pellets. She She'd been getting pellets. the pellets. Mm -hmm. Then when we start doing the laser, she got the laser. She was like waterfall. Uh -huh. you know? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. What well, Dr. <laughs> Dr. Dr. Birds? <laughs> did I make I had to blush? Oh my God. <laughs> I, listen, I am literally blushing. And this is, I gotta get my, let me drink some water. I gotta get myself together. Like, what is it? I cannot believe you. Boy, if I was fair skinned, like right oh, now, you'd be in trouble. I would literally like be a sweater. Like, I, I sweater right, I look, but I literally see some redness in my cheeks, like, really and truly, because I am just like, wow. Okay, yeah. But, okay, so Dr. Burst, tell the audience how to reach you where you're located i gotta get myself together how they can get you, you like where they can come and yeah reach you and look and get these pellets and or this um what do you call it? yeah the <laughs> Laser, everything right? the PRP. so many things ladies that um that you can get them all dr birds can what your name your practice is called it's called better health greater better life health. Greater Better life, health, uh, literally life. pun intended, right? Pun, pun intended. intended, right? Yes, pun definitely intended. You can find <laughs> us at betterhealthgreaterlife.com. 
We are on Instagram okay. and Facebook. We're working on those more. We're trying to get our social media right. Mm -hmm. um, 404-835-7779, 404-835-7779. And um, we're in Grant Park near the zoo at 494 Boulevard Southeast, Atlanta. Okay. Okay. And of course, um, Dr. Burst, along with all of the other doctors on the advisory team, um, information um, is on blackpink.org website. And um, Dr. Burst, this has been really, really good. <laughs> we went over our time, but needed. <laughs> like <laughs> Dr. Burst came in and said, no, how, how long is this going to be? And now we've gone <laughs> over our time, but this has been really, really good and really enjoyable. And I can't wait to hear um, feedback on like, oh my gosh, can we talk about this a little bit more when we, when we finish, when we finish this and we can get back out into the world, right. we can have a big Hope conference, so. right? Where women great. can, yeah, are able to ask questions and just, just become better stewards of their health and their uh, the JJs, if you will, right. and their sexual health and, and sexual you know, and their health. sexual yeah. health. And, and, and so, so younger women are able to uh, be more in control of their sexual health and understand more of who they are. And when you say about the douches earlier, I know that women are already starting to understand uh, mm -hmm. more, but this vaginal Dr. Burst will definitely be back to talk some more in this series. Um, but vaginal dryness is a necessary topic. We've learned so much. We've learned about CBD. Uh, we've learned new <laughs> words and we thank you for being here with us today. And we really me. look forward to having you again. And thank you for adjusting your schedule and everything looks really pretty for the ones of you who are on the YouTube channel, looking at this and not hearing it. So, <laughs> um, Dr. Burst until, uh, the next time, next time. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going to try and get myself together and go on to uh, my musical, uh, my musical soul note and uh, my future artist. <laughs> I'm going to try to get myself together and move on. But thank you so much for uh, you. joining. Thank you for doing this. Uh, absolutely. The, oh, thank you. You're, you're welcome. The Rhythm Notes of Public Health. With me, you see, I said I'm the soul of public health. You see why now, right? You understand? So <laughs> thank you for joining us and we'll see you um, soon. Bye. So yeah, um, that was really, really good. Um, we are going to be talking about a lot of things here and um, we are going to be really addressing women's health and the things that we need to understand about um, women's health. So I look forward to that. Um, right now, I am back again featuring uh, my friend who went to college with me, Musiki Scales, um, because I didn't do him justice um, last week. I featured one of his songs from his new album, um, West West Africa. Musiki Scales went to Tuskegee with me, and the song that you're hearing now is Let the Drum Remind You. I really love this album, well, album West West Africa. This is our soul note. Um, I want to help you breathe. For me, it's no music, no life. This is a way for me to incorporate my love for music and my love for science. If you want this song and this album, you can go to musikiskills.com and that's M-A-U-S-K-I scales, S-C-A-L-E-S. -E and the album is titled West West Africa. I look forward to you checking him out, him saying, hey, we have some people to come over to check us out and um, see what's going on. So that's Musiki Scales West West Africa. And so until then, until the next time, um, I am saying to you, um, take care. I am saying to you, Remember, we repeat what we don't repair. I am saying to you, when life moves fast and your mind does too, remember to breathe. It will get you through. I am Kai Ianta Burks. I'm the soul of public health. 
You've been listening to the Rhythm Notes of Public Health and today's topic, vaginal dryness and today's artist, Musiki Scale with his album, West West Africa. I'll see you next time. Bye.